Welcome to Flourishment, the podcast on living life as you were meant to, so you can flourish. Welcome, everyone. I have an amazing woman of God here with me today. Her name is Amy Debrick. She's a wife, a mom of four, a cancer survivor, an author of Embolden. She's the founder of the Life on Purpose movement and host of the Life on Purpose podcast, where she encourages women to live life on purpose instead of in fear. Welcome, Amy. I'm so glad that you're on Flourishment today. Well, thank you so much, Tina. I'm excited to talk to you this morning. Let's talk about what empowered you and inspired you in your story to talk about this very interesting word, embolden. Mm. Well, you know, honestly, when I first, before we wrote embolden, um, you know, I didn't really think about my experience. Um, and how much that really would play into this book. You know, when we first created this, it really was a a beginning project of something my daughter was dealing with at the time. And um, it didn't take long though, uh, with many conversations that we had had that, you know, fear never really ages out. And so fear was the connect between the two of us that of, you know, things that I had faced in my past that led me for, to live with, you know, years of severe anxiety and then her in her early 20s and how I could see where that could spiral out of control as well if we didn't nip it, you know, where it, and when it needed to be. And so that's really where emboldening came out of. But I could relate to the fear piece and being emboldened, I think, was a, a message that we wanted women to get as early as possible to know that they didn't have to live with um, anxiety and fear and how they could do that early on. You know, this is a book that I wish I had had um, when I was a young adult. And um, although I, I do appreciate everything that God has allowed in my life, and I think that that's helped me to create this, um, I think it's a great resource for young women, especially and, and saying that when we created it, I feel like the, the uh, four weeks that we talk about never age out. I think it's just a matter of, you know, sometimes we get in hard seasons in life and um, it's one of these books where you can re-pick it back up and say, okay, you know, I maybe drop the ball here and how can I, how can I get this back on track? I feel like this is such a timely message, especially right now, anxiety and stress are at a peak at this moment in our history as human beings, we are more facing fear as a pandemic than we are any other virus that could possibly be out there. So I'm really thankful that you took the time and the effort and the perseverance to get through this project, to put this out for people. Let's talk about this amazing piece that you have included in not just emboldening yourself, but in doing that for others. I think that that's an important thing to talk about because the way that we work together is how we stay emboldened. Right. Well, you're absolutely right. That was the perfect lead in for that. I think a lot of times I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a conscious thing, but we, we meet women where they are, but we, we don't do anything after that. And so, you know, I think it's really important. And this was very intentional for Blair and I is to meet them where they are, but not leave them there. You know, we do have to follow up. And I do think um, it doesn't necessarily always have to be someone much older, but it does have to be someone who is willing to continue to come alongside that person, continue to check in, you know, let them know that they're not alone. Be, you know, share your um, honesty and vulnerabilities of, of things that you can relate to them, but check back around, help them. You know, it's really hard. Um it's easy to identify with someone, but sometimes they need that extra step. And it's really important as um, in fellowship, especially with women to make sure we just don't forget. And we, and we do naturally sometimes, right. It's life gets busy and we all have our own, um, you know, priorities that we have. We have families, we have jobs and different things, but if we could just take a little bit of time to just, you know, even if we have to write a note to ourselves to say, you know, I need to 
follow back with this person and, oh, I'm at the, here's a woman's Bible study and you get that woman's name in your head and, and do something with it. Don't, don't let it just lie there because those are the ways I think that we can continue to embolden each other. And I think that's how we're created. We're created to work out these things in community when we get into those isolated spaces, which we have suffered from in these recent few years. That's where we start to get more fearful. And that's where our emotional and mental well being starts to break down. We need the community of other people to help us build up and get stronger and stay stronger. We build one another up mutually by being in fellowship. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's such a priority and honestly, and I'm very, uh, um, I am candid about this. I've shared this many times. One of the biggest reasons I think I lived with anxiety for so many years was because I was embarrassed to share my weakness of what I thought it was. I was embarrassed to share my, my grief and all of that. Now, you know, years later, and some of that's just age and and wisdom that comes with that. And you see the connection in the community that can come. It's such a healing process. It's such a, it's such a gift to be able to do that, but it is scary, but it's, it's something that is so worth it. And that's why sometimes I feel like you need that other person to help the woman who is struggling to want to be able to share, to want to step into something. Because when you're not in a great mental space, it's hard to show up for things like that. There's That's where we need the other women to help us along. That's right. I agree with that 100%. I'm going to take a break for just a second and talk about something that's related. I have two new courses that just came out this year on stress and anxiety. The first one that came out is the comprehensive 10 week course presented by 15 experts in 10 minutes a day for 10 weeks. You could change your life. It comes with a workbook, a resource page, and tons of bonuses from all of our guest presenters. So I encourage you to check that out. I will include that link in the show notes. Now let's get back to Amy's story. Tell us, Amy, how do we start this process of going from a place of fear and insecurity, of doubting our purpose, to being emboldened to discover our own purpose, and then from there to move into helping others discover purpose as well? Well, I think that's a great question, Tina, because really you can't you can't reach back for that woman if you're still in a, in a place that's struggling. And so one of the things that we did, um, that was also intentional in the book was we started with what we feel like holds women back the most or holds really anybody back the most. And that's fear. So we start with week one being fearless, but what does that look like? You know, we all struggle with fear, but it's very unique to the individual that's experiencing it. So it's kind of that opportunity to take a pause Like I had said before, you know, we're always very busy in our lives and sometimes we don't take the necessary pause where it could really benefit us. We take the pause for like scrolling and all of those things. And, and we feel like, okay, well, that's just an enjoyment break. And for the most part, I think that that's true. But what happens is if we could just take that five to 20 minutes on ourselves and really start working through these things. Okay. What, so what fear is holding me back? Like where, you know, maybe we have a few of them, but what one's really getting in the way of maybe that next brave step that God might be calling me to. And then once we can kind of address that, then what is at the root of that fear? And so we try to just have people just think a little bit deeper than just surface related about their fears and what that looks like. Because I think once you can name it and claim it, then it really, you start, it starts losing the power it has over your life. And then that kind of quiets. And then you can hear God's voice calling you, where are the places that I should be leaning in instead? And, and how that really, you know, domino effects from there. That is so true because fear always magnifies the potential effects of what could happen. And it makes it seem bigger than it really is. And somehow in the space of our mind, in our silence, before we say it out loud, before we look at dead in its beady little eyes, 
that fear convinces us subliminally and subconsciously that it's bigger than anything God could do to rescue us from it. Right. And that's so true. You get so drowned out with fear in all of the lies that it comes. It's hard to get out of that space. And so I, we, we thought it was really important to start there. And then we just go into move from there to the different topics like kindness and not only just kindness to ourselves, but you know, what are we putting out to other people also, you know, sometimes that really ha- affects our life. And so there's a lot of self uh, checking to see where you're actually at. I think a lot of times we, we might think we're in a certain place. We might think we act or speak a certain way, but sometimes until we're calling ourselves out and this is a gentle way to do it. It's, you know, private it's, you know, you don't have to Um, necessarily share it with anyone, but as long as you're seeing it and you can see where you might need to do a little bit more work, I think that's the most important. And then we just move on to topics like temptation, which we all fall into, whether it's too much time, like I said, on social media, or just, um, it could be anything and go from there. And what is tempting us? And again, everything relates back to are, are these actions hindering us from, uh, a calling that maybe God has on our heart to be brave, to be emboldened, and then to embolden others. Because those things, little by little, begin to hold you back without you even realizing it. You know, one of the biggest things that my daughter and I both struggle with is getting out of our comfort zones. And so I think those are the times, though, when you do that, even though it's scary, and I always say, even if you show up for something that you feel like was miserable experience, but the reality is it's still a win because you went, you faced your fear, you, you, you took yourself out of your comfort zone. And even if nobody acted or, you know, appreciated the event of you doing it, you still did it. And it's still a win because you were obedient. And then the more you do that, I think it's easier to hear that. And it's easier to lean in when he's calling. That is so good. And it makes me think when we get to those places where things don't work out, How do we look at that differently than just a fail? How do we look at what we gained from it, what we learned from it and how we grew? And that's really a great point that you made when you were talking about it's it's still a win when you have shown up for something. That's really good. Right. Well, I think it's hard to do. You know, I don't say that flippantly because one of the things, you know, Blair and I always laugh about is we're both introverts. So what could be very seem like nothing to somebody else could be, feel very significant, um, and scary to the introvert. And it could be something as simple as, Oh, I've always wanted to, you know, join this class, but, or wanted to join this group or go to this thing by myself or whatever. And to some people that seems like, why, why are you even talking that out? But to somebody else, it, that's a scary step. But I think the more we can push past what's those, what those fears are, because like you had pointed out, Tina, the fears are normally just lies, but they do consume us and it really hinders your confidence. And that confidence trickles into every aspect of your life without even recognizing it. And then you wake up and you're like, okay, now I'm afraid of everything. If I can't control it, or if I don't know what the end result is always going to be, then I'm not going to do it. And the fear also lies to us to tell us that not moving is better than trying. And that isn't true. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is such a lie, but it, it does, it it locks you into that place though. And I feel like it kind of holds you in a bondage that you don't even realize that you're in until you see, and this is what I see a lot of times on social media. I feel like that's a comfort zone for many people because they, they're, They're watching people's lives, but they're not living their own. That's true. And there's no risk involved because you're just observing. Right, right. There's no risk involved. But there's no growth involved either. So where there's no risk, there's no growth. And do we really, really experience life in a more fulfilling way when there's no risk and no growth? Right. And the answer to that undoubtedly is no. And so that's where we end actually our fourth week is growth because we want the person to grow. We want them to see the grow, the growth. And we, that's why we acknowledge those small wins because every small win is growth. 
And sometimes, like I said, sometimes we don't even pay attention to it. But I think, again, that's a lot of the distractions we have, the busyness. And so I think it would be nice also when you're sitting down and you're like, oh, well, you know, I actually did do that. I did that with my youngest daughter the other day. We were going through it, she and I, because my oldest daughter and I wrote it. And so I wanted to just go through it page by page with my youngest daughter because she's 15. And it was interesting because we had this exact moment and I said, so, you know, whatever the question was, like, um, did you ever, so did you ever go back to like doing something that you wouldn't have expected doing before or whatever? And she was thinking about it. And then she was like, oh, wait, yeah, I went to that new Bible study at church and she was a nervous wreck. She didn't know anybody. We had just changed churches. And so Um, but you know, she was, if, had we not sat there and thought about it, she would have just dismissed it. And it wasn't really, no, she wouldn't have even acknowledged that she had done something really out of her comfort zone. And then all of a sudden, the minute you say that, the minute she said it, it kind of, she kind of lit up because it was like, wow, I, I did do something, you know, and that does count. Yeah. It's almost like you need to take a regular inventory of what have I done to grow this week? What have I done to move past what I thought was my comfort zone, but was really my rut? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's hard because it's easy to stay in the rut. And then the other side to that is when we are taking the time to take inventory, you know, then we can see the other gaps that we need to really dig in and, and take hold of and say, you know what, I really, you know, I need to really move in this direction, whether it's, um, you know, if you're going back to the weekend kindness and, you know, maybe I'm too judgmental, you know, maybe my expectations are too high or how can I shift my perspective? So maybe what I want to say is received as more uh, in a loving manner instead of being judgmental or harsh or something like that. So I love the book in the sense that we really wanted women to, like I said, um, meet them where they are, but not leave them there, but also leave them feeling supported and equipped. And, um, whether it's a a new Christian picking it up or a seasoned Christian picking it up, it's either going to want you to learn more and get, get you excited to learn more about how God already sees you and in the potential or reignite somebody in their faith and say, you know what? I need to kind of, to get on the horn here. I've, I've been slacking a little bit, which we all do. And, um, and just kind of reevaluate, you know, where are the spaces that I need to kind of dig in a little harder? That's so great. And this is going to be such a powerful resource for so many. What would you say is the takeaway that you hope each woman reads and gets from your book? I think the biggest thing for Blair and I is really wanting women to know their worth number one, because their worth in Christ is, is priceless. And I think if you can just even tap into that just a little bit, you already can feel a little bit more emboldened because you already know that you have the potential, whether you're there yet or not, whether you've made that first brave step or not, you know, you can, because somebody already else knows your potential and in your worth and value. And so that's really kind of the main thing is just to not be discouraged, you know, don't be discouraged where you are today. Um, everybody needs the work, you know, like I said, for me, it was interesting. I'm 50. She's in her early twenties and the topics don't age out. And so even if you felt like you've been on a good run for a long time and you're in a season of hardness or just you know, you've gotten a little too comfortable, don't be discouraged, you know, and for the woman who is in that good season at the moment, reach back for the, for the woman who is not, and who could need, who, who could really use that extra, you know, support and boost. And it sometimes it's just as simple as a phone call, but it's so important to just not, not leave them hanging. That's so good. How can people reach you and get to know more about your podcast and get a copy of your book and know about all the things that you have going on in your life on purpose movement? Sure. Well, you can reach me. My handle on social media is at Amy Debrick, which I know that's a long last name, but um, as far as my website, it's Amy Debrick also, but you can also connect it with Amy at surrenderyourfear.com. It 
that goes back to the same website. Um, there's a bunch of free resources on there for courage and confidence and overcoming fear. And uh, I even have a confidence course on there. This new release of Embolden, actually we have a purse size coming out. So it's a little bit more travel friendly, same, same book, a little bit different cover, but the same content. So you have access to these wonderful resources. I'm so glad that you came on flourishment today, Amy. And I love that you have this wonderful, purposeful movement that you are leading for women life on purpose. It lines right up with my heart and my vision as well. So I'm excited about it. I hope that all of you listening will connect with Amy and her life on purpose movement and podcast. And I also hope that you will come back for the next episode of flourishment. Flourishment is part of the spark media network and can be found on the edify app.